Welcome to section 12 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Streptococcus aegalactiae, which you can see right here. You should know that Strep aegalactiae is also known as group B strep, or GBS. In this scene, there will be a group of hippies camping near a glacier. Glacier sounds kind of like aegalactiae, so in this image, it will be our symbol for Strep aegalactiae. Glacier, Strep aegalactiae. Notice that this glacier is on the bay right next to a bunch of the snow. Bay sounds like beta, so it will represent that Strep aegalactiae is beta hemolytic. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we discussed in more detail in section seven, which was our video on listeria. Again, beta hemolysis looks like this. Notice the clearing zone of hemolysis surrounding the colony right here. In order to reinforce the idea of the hippies camping, we'll show two tents. The tents will be used to help you memorize two facts. First, notice that the tents are purple. The purple color here should help you remember that Strep aegalactiae is a gram-positive organism. So purple tents for gram-positive. This is a gram stain of streptococci. Notice that the organism stains purple, which is why it's a gram-positive organism. And also notice that the bacteria are circular or cocci-shaped and that they form long continuous chains. This morphology is unique to Streptococcus. So Strep aegalactiae appears similar to this under the microscope. The second fact that the tents will help you remember is that Strep aegalactiae produces camp factor. In most of our videos, the tents will represent cyclic AMP, but in this video, the tents along with the camping theme will represent camp factor. Camping sounds like camp factor, so we thought this would work well. This is a figure of a positive CAMP test. The CAMP test means that when Strep aegalactiae is plated with Staph aureus on blood agar, there will be a bigger zone of hemolysis. So the white streak going from left to right, right here, is Staph aureus. Because Staph aureus is beta hemolytic, there is some clearing around the colonies, as you can see right here, for example. And in this test, Strep aegalactiae is plated perpendicularly to Staph aureus. So going from top to bottom, right here. If the test is positive, then there will be an arrowhead of beta hemolysis as strep comes in close proximity to Staph aureus. Notice the arrowhead right here and right here. So again, the CAMP test is helpful in identifying group B strep, and it results in an enlarged area of hemolysis when plated next to Staph aureus. Okay, moving on, if you look at the entrance to the tents, you can see that we've shown some sleeping sacs coming out onto the snow. Sac sounds like polysaccharide, so this is to help you remember that Strep aegalactiae has a polysaccharide capsule. Now we'll show this hippie playing the bass guitar with chains on it. Hippies are commonly associated with music, so it shouldn't be too surprising that these hippies are playing music while they camp next to the freezing cold glacier. Bass guitar sounds kind of like bacitracin, so we chose a bass guitar as our symbol for bacitracin. Also, chains are great at locking things up and creating a strong resistant force, so we thought a chain wrapped around the bass guitar would work well for bacitracin resistant. So, bass guitar with chains for bacitracin resistant. We discussed this figure in section 9, which was our video on the Viridans group streptococci. But recall that if there is clearing around a disc saturated with a compound, then the organism is sensitive to that compound. If there's no clearing, then the organism is resistant to that compound. So if this were a bacitracin disc, then the organism here would be bacitracin resistant. For step 1, you need to know that strep aegalactiae is bacitracin resistant. Okay, now let's talk about these hippies. Hippies sounds kind of like hippurate, so the three hippies together should help you remember that group B strep has a positive hippurate test. This just means that group B strep can hydrolyze the compound sodium hippurate. Notice that the woman in this scene is pregnant and appears to be coughing. It shouldn't be too surprising that she's coughing considering that she's camping next to a glacier without a coat on. What was she thinking? Anyways, the fact that she's pregnant and that she's coughing should help you remember that strep aegalactiae can cause pneumonia in neonates. So cough for pneumonia and pregnant for neonates. Next, notice that the guy next to the pregnant lady is sipping some hot chocolate to help him stay warm in the cold weather. Sipping sounds kind of like sepsis, so in this image, the guy sipping hot chocolate next to the pregnant woman should help you remember that group B strep is a common cause of sepsis in neonates. Notice that we've added a hat on the pregnant lady and a headband on the hippie guy. Hopefully this hat will keep the pregnant lady a bit warmer. The hat and headband go on top of and surround the head, just like the meninges surround the brain. So in our images, hats and headbands will commonly be used to represent meningitis. In this scene, the hat and headband should help you remember that strep aegalactiae causes meningitis in neonates. So to review, group B strep causes sepsis, pneumonia, and meningitis in neonates. Okay, now let's talk about the pregnant lady a bit more. We've shown this pregnant lady to help you remember that the organism most commonly affects neonates, but to also help remind you that 
pregnant women should be screened for group B strep at 35 to 37 weeks gestation. This is because women colonized with group B strep can transmit the bug to offspring as the baby passes through the birth canal. Therefore, vaginal and rectal swabs are obtained from pregnant women at 35 to 37 weeks to see if the mother is colonized. If she is colonized, then she's treated with penicillin during childbirth, not at the time of screening. This is a super important point. Antibiotics are usually given around the time of delivery and not at 35 to 37 weeks gestation. If they're given too early, then the mother may become colonized again during delivery. So remember, pregnant women for screen at 35 to 37 weeks gestation. To help you remember the treatment, we'll show the hippie guy throwing some pennies into a tips jar. Penny sounds like penicillin, so this should help you remember that penicillin is the treatment. Again, if a pregnant woman is found to be colonized with strep agalactiae at 35 to 37 weeks, then she's treated prophylactically with penicillin during childbirth to decrease the risk of transmitting the organism to the child. So pennies for penicillin. Finally, we'll add a guitar amp that's hooked up to the bass so everyone can hear the music loud and clear. Amp sounds like ampicillin, so amps will be our symbol for ampicillin. The amp in this scene should help you remember that women can also be treated with ampicillin. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's do a question. A 27-year-old female presents to the physician for a follow-up visit at 37 weeks gestation. The physician recommends vaginal and rectal cultures to screen for colonization of a potentially harmful microorganism transmitted to the neonate during childbirth. The organism of interest most likely demonstrates what type of hemolysis. Okay, from the question stem, hopefully you notice that this is describing group B strep. As we've been discussing, group B strep may colonize the vagina and rectum, so vaginal and rectal cultures are typically obtained at 35 to 37 weeks gestation. And as stated in the question stem, this woman is 37 weeks along. If the mother is colonized, then the organism can be transmitted to the neonate during childbirth, just as the question stem states right here. Therefore, we can conclude that the question stem is describing strep agalactiae, which demonstrates beta hemolysis. So the answer to the question is beta hemolysis. From the image, recall that the bay right here represents beta hemolysis. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis. Notice that beta hemolysis looks like this. And that should be everything you need to know about strep agalactiae.